welcome to Raj Sabha Television. I am Akhilesh Suman and you are watching Indian Standard Time. We are in the city of London and on the top of City Hall, the mayoral office of the city. London is a beautiful city, well maintained and Thames River flowing in between. We are going to talk about how the city is maintained and the person who is being interviewed is Mr. Rajesh Agarwal, who is Deputy Mayor of London and he is also an indoor boy. Mr. Agarwal, you are an indoor boy of India and you have reached at this level at the age of 40. It is very important achievement for you but you have also done so many things before that. So how did you achieve this position? Well, it's, uh, it's all testimony to London and London's openness that it gives you an opportunity to achieve what you want to achieve. Uh, I was born in Indore, uh, born and brought up there actually. I was there until I was 22. Okay. And when I was 24 in uh, 2001, I had got an opportunity to move to London. And uh, I still remember the day when I moved to London, when I first came here, I'd never been on a plane before. I'd never been outside India before. Oh my God. And I... <laughs> and, and now we are standing at the top of the building, you know, that uh, such a huge uh, commercial space. So that is the, of course, the old uh, financial district uh, of London. But uh, yeah, and uh, then I, I, I worked in a foreign exchange business uh, for about three years and then set up my own business in 2005. So when you came to London, what did you do here? So I worked in a small foreign exchange uh, business because that was my background before moving to London. Hmm. Uh, before moving to London when I was in um, Mumbai, yeah. I, I did similar kind of uh, job. Okay. Uh, so when I came here, uh, I worked in a small foreign exchange company yeah. um, and then set up my own business uh, three years later. Oh my God. So after you opened your own business, how did you manage it? How beneficial it was for your career? Well, it was uh, fantastic itself because London is a city which is full of opportunities, uh, especially if you are setting uh, up a business. It's, uh, there are a lot of, there's a lot of help available and it's a fantastic place to start a business. And I saw a gap in the market and I thought, why not? I'll go for it. Oh, that's uh, a very interesting thing. Uh, you had been in India and you are standing before the commercial districts of uh, London and I think uh, it is one of the biggest financial market of the world also. So you told that uh, it is easy to do business here in London. So how easy it is if you compare with India? Well, I never did business in India, but London on the rankings yeah, of uh, being easiest to do business. Yeah. Uh, so uh, PwC yeah. always yeah. produce a list mm. of uh, uh, on the ease of doing business. Yeah. London always comes as number one city in the world uh, in those rankings. Okay. So uh, it's easier to set up a company, it's easier to unwind the company if you have to. Right. Um, there's a lot of help available, fantastic infrastructure. Okay. But the number one thing okay. uh, which makes London a great place to do business is the amazing talent uh, that you have. So if you have to hire people regardless of the industry that you are in, you'll find some amazing people uh, here talent in London. Talent is one part of it, but business doesn't run just because of talent. Business also run because of the whole business environment, the whole bureaucratic system. So how did you find, how did you manage these two things, business environment and the bureaucratic system? Well, as an entrepreneur, you yeah. always learn and you find your way around things. That's what uh, entrepreneurship is all about, right? right? right. Uh, and uh, entrepreneurs are able to do some of these things. And also the ecosystem is quite good. So there is a lot of support from other entrepreneurs, which makes a huge difference. So entrepreneurs, tend to help other entrepreneurs. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's quite common across the world actually, uh, you know, where the entrepreneurs help each other. Um, and, and that makes it quite interesting. But then there's help available from the government. Uh, there are uh, incentives like that. Um, there's help available at different levels. But really, it's also the entrepreneurial drive uh, that keeps you going anywhere in the world. If you are an entrepreneur at heart, you will do well regardless of where but you are. you must be in touch with your Indian fraternity people. How difficult they find, how difficult they find as an entrepreneur in India and how easy you find as an entrepreneur in London? Well, entrepreneurs always face challenges wherever you are, whether you are in India, whether you are in London, entrepreneurs uh, ship is always challenging okay. but again so one being an entrepreneur makes a big difference mm. secondly you need the ecosystem it's not just everything about the government mm. it's also the ecosystem that you have which means the infrastructure the talent 
and it's about learning from each other. So if we are able to create the environment, so for example, people say for entrepreneurship, Silicon Valley is amazing. Right. Yeah. Now why is Silicon Valley amazing and a lot of places around the world have tried to replicate huh. the success of Silicon Valley yeah. um, is because they've created this fantastic environment where the entrepreneurship can flourish. Uh, and there, is, uh, there's, there are investors, there are entrepreneurs, there is talent, and that's what we have in London as well. And that's why entrepreneurship is great. If you talk about the digital industry, okay. in London there are about 47,000 digital businesses. About one third of them only started in the last five years. So we are going through this phenomenal tech revolution. We call it the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, and that is absolutely fantastic. And uh, London is at the forefront of some of these things uh, in the world. So when uh, you try to move out or move away or move up in business, how did you come in this political situation that you became deputy mayor of London? Well, I was always interested in social change because I grew up in very humble uh, background. Okay. My mother was a school teacher. Uh, in Indore. Mm. Uh, my father worked for the state government mm. uh, and he used to work in the irrigation department. Okay. So building dams and he used to work on uh, building dams. So uh, money has never been a great motivator. For me it was about bringing social change. So You, you want some political power also? Not political power. It's, it's about what change you can bring in the society okay. and how do you influence that positive change in the society. So even if you look at my, my business, it was quite disruptive. It was about bringing that change in the society. So we made, uh, we created UK's first online currency exchange system which, uh, which didn't exist before. You did? We did, yeah, in our business. So those are some of the things. So it's about bringing change in the society. So I became involved with a number of charitable organizations like the Princess Trust who help young entrepreneurs, young people uh, in this country uh, and so on. And then, but then I realized after working with so many different charitable organizations yeah. that if you want to bring change at a big scale, there's no better platform uh, than uh, policy and government. Okay. So you have to roll up your sleeves, get your hands dirty and get involved in politics in the, in the middle of all that. So when, when did you join politics? So uh, a few years ago, uh, I be, became more active in politics and uh, then uh, uh, when uh, I was involved with the campaign uh, of Sadiq Khan, who is now the mayor of London, um, okay, you campaigned with Sadiq Khan? I campaigned with Sadiq Khan. Okay. And then he won and I thought job done. But then a few weeks later Brexit happened uh, and he wanted me here in uh, City Hall as the Deputy Mayor of London for business. Mr. Sadiq Khan is from Pakistan. He's, you he, are, he, uh, Sadiq Khan was born and brought up in London actually, not too far from here in South London. I know. Uh, Sadiq Khan is from Pakistan. You are from India. And you know that India-Pakistan never gel together. So how you people gel together? Well, we are all Londoners here. Okay. We don't see ourselves, I mean, we are very proud of our heritage. Okay. I'm of Indian heritage, I'm very proud of it. Uh -huh. uh, Sadiq's grandparents were from India. Uh -huh. uh, his parents uh, were uh, from Pakistan. He was born and brought up here. London, in London, over 300 languages are spoken. Almost every nationality in the world probably has got a presence in London. It's perhaps the most diverse uh, society in the world, right. most diverse mm. city in the world. 40% of London's population was born outside of the UK. So we are truly a melting pot. And we don't just uh, tolerate diversity, we celebrate diversity and that's something we are very proud of. So everybody here, regardless of their heritage, background, we are all Londoners and we all uh, work together and we love it. So when you were campaigning for Mr. Sadiq Khan, did this question came because when you are in politics you need to address different segments of society different people of different origins of society so did you face any such question that uh, the person who is from pakistan you are from india how are you campaigning because indian community might be thinking that uh, how you are campaigning for a person from pakistan well when people voted uh, for sadiq khan they voted for an individual who is very driven okay. who is a londoner born and bred londoner uh, who feels very passionate uh, about london and people voted on that uh, on on the policies on the manifesto and a number of other things um, so 
and, and and like I said, in London, there's almost every nationality that is present here. Right. So people focus on who's going to be a good mayor, who okay. can actually deliver, yeah. who has got great policies. Those are the most important things. Right. So, Mr. Sadi Khan belong to which party? Labour Party. Yeah. Labour Party. So now you are also with the Labour Party. I have been. Uh, I'm a member of the Labour Party for many years. Okay. So, do you think that uh, being in politics in Britain and being in politics in India is t uh, two different things, two different uh, type of uh, uh, understanding and uh, interaction with the people? Well, I don't know much about the Indian politics because I was never involved in the politics there. Ah. Uh, but it's all about bringing change in the society, isn't yeah. it? And people have got different views and hence there are different political parties. But ultimate goal is to bring uh, positive uh, change in the society. So, uh, because of the different different views, uh, there are different political parties, and that is the beauty no, of democracy. But, but uh, you belong to a place, Sumitra Mahajan, the Speaker of Lok Sabha, is from the same place, Indore, and you must be interacting with her whenever you are going to uh, India. So, do you understand something that how difficult for her to do politics, and how difficult for you to do politics here in Britain? Well, there's always a uh, sort of different environment, isn't it? It's different countries. Uh, but having said that, the political system is fairly similar in both the countries. Okay. Because uh, <laughs> London is, uh, as we call it, the mother of all democracies. All right. Uh, and quite a few Commonwealth countries, and this week is the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, uh, including India. Yeah. Uh, the democracy is very sort of similar uh, and on the on the sort of British uh, model as well. So yeah, every country has got its own nuances. Uh, uh, but but you know it's it's amazing that India has got such a fantastic democracy. It's the largest democracy in the world. So now you, uh, I will come to the municipal issues. You are a deputy mayor of London. How do you manage such a big city in a, a complicated city where people are speaking three hundred languages? how easy it is and how difficult it is? Well, it's quite interesting because London is also one of the oldest cities in the world. Yeah, yeah, I mean, right. it's, it's amazing. It's over a 1,000 year old uh, city yeah. and it has developed over the years and it was uh, the, for the last couple of hundred years has been uh, the global capital of trade and finance for, right. for, for many, many right, years. Right. I come from a foreign exchange background. About $3 trillion uh, are traded every day in the foreign exchange world, uh, about half of which is just traded from that city, just just that square mile, the uh, old uh, city of London from the financial district, as we call it. And London is a city which welcomes people from around the world. Mm. And over a period of time, the so the, so London uh, has is is where we are here, City Hall. This is the home for the Mayor of London and the Greater London Authority. Right. But then altogether there are 33 local authorities in right. London, right. and they run the sort of municipal functions hmm. uh, around uh, so, some of the municipal functions. Greater London Authority and the Mayor of London has got a more of a strategic role, and it's slightly different from. The, um, the 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 mayoral positions in India, for example, right. uh, as in the mayor is also responsible for policing and crime in London. Hmm. Um, so that is part of it. So the policing and crime, like a chief minister right. uh, in London. Mr. Agawal, we were talking very interesting thing that uh, mayoral position and the municipal corporation need to take care of so many things like public amenities, civic amenities, also the cleanliness. So, how do you manage such a huge city in that sense? So, the mayor's position is more of a strategic role okay. and it's interesting. Uh, so, the easier way to understand this, I think, would be it's uh, somewhat similar to the state government, so the chief okay. minister position in a state. Okay. Uh, so, the mayor is also responsible uh, for policing and crime in London. Policing also? Yes. Okay. It comes under, uh, within the mayor's entire transport system, including the TFL, Transport for London, all the tube, okay. all the red buses, which is also quite interesting because Sadiq's father yeah. was a bus driver. Okay. And he used to drive one of those red buses. Okay. And now, uh, of course, Sadiq is the chairman of TFL as the mayor of London. Uh, is quite interesting. But the Transport for London, uh, the tube, for example, is the oldest underground trains in the uh, tube network in the world uh, going well over 150 years ago. Okay. So even Mahatma Gandhi used to travel in the tube. Uh, 
right. uh, in, in, in London. Yeah. So that is also comes under the sort of mayoral responsibility and then responsibilities around housing uh, and some of the other things comes under the mayor. So, so I see that London is very clean city, London is very well managed. So it is well managed historically and it is continuing I think. Yeah, London is, uh, is a great city. It has developed over a period of time. It has grown over a period of time. Um, and it's, it also faces some challenges mm. like any other big city in the world. Mm. Uh, it, it faces certain challenges around uh, air quality, uh, congestion, okay. uh, you know, similar to what a lot of big cities and the, uh, around the world face and the challenges that urbanization brings with it. So uh, generally what we see in Delhi and Mumbai and other parts of the country of India that uh, the city is not so clean. How do you keep the city clean? Well, it's the responsibility of the local authorities across uh, London, uh, and 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 that you know for for years it's also in the culture, it's also part of the system, um, uh, and so on. Now, interestingly, I'm uh, I was born and brought up in Indore, and in the recent. Uh, uh, times in the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. I know, I know. Indore, Indore was excelling, voted as uh, the cleanest city. Yeah, that's uh, uh, Indore was and voted as the... Indore boy is it's me. So that's why <laughs> I'm asking that uh, what is the learning lesson for India as far as the cleanliness part is concerned of a city? Well, that it can be done. Indore has shown. Indore, uh, last time I visited, you could see a considerable difference. So it shows that it can be done. Um, and I saw there are the, the, the whole sort of bin, uh, the rubbish collection system uh, in Indore that they've developed, which is excellent. Um, and also they've got these machines that uh, sweep uh, the roads, which is excellent. They also segregate the waste mm. in different bins. Mm. Uh, and, and, and we do something similar here. So yeah. here as well, different boroughs have got different. So you've got the green bin, uh, you've got the blue bin, you've got the brown bin. Uh, so there are different bins, so we segregate the waste. How, how well paid are the cleaners here, the people who keep the city clean? Well, everybody has, to, uh, you know, there's a national minimum wage, okay. uh, which is uh, hugely important and everybody in the country is paid uh, the, national, the national minimum wage. Uh, uh, so, uh, including the sweepers and so on. So that is most important and you have raised a very important point around social equality. Yeah. Uh, is, is so important uh, around the world in, in all the cities and very important for the mayor of London as well. Right. Uh, so we've been campaigning for the London living wage, which is quite important uh, to make sure that everybody in the city gets looked after, whether they are uh, cleaning the roads or whether they are the CEO of a company, whether they are an entrepreneur, uh, everybody has got a right uh, uh, to, a, uh, to a fair way. So, so do you think that India should also replicate this model of uh, giving proper wages to the cleaners who are uh, really, who need to do much work and better work? Well, it is important for any city, any society to look after the poorest for the weak and vulnerable in the society. They are not just the poorest, their contribution is immense and uh, if you don't uh, have them, you can't uh, have a city. So in that way, they, it is not a question of being poor, it is a question of importance of work. So do you think that London gives importance to that work? It is quite important, like I said. So regardless of the job you are in, people have to be paid fairly. That's the most and important treated. thing. And treated well, of course. I mean, that goes without saying. Regard, you know, how somebody is treated has got uh, not much to do with their uh, economic background. If somebody is rich or poor, it doesn't matter. Uh, everybody has to be treated equally, and that is the sign of a good developed society. No, I, just because you had been in India, do you think that uh, a certain level of respectability should also be given to the cleaners who keep the city clean and that motivates them to keep it better. Of course, but also a city can be kept clean with public participation. Okay. It's Here not in just London a, public participate? It's not just the response. London public resp participate? Public participate in a way by doing the responsibility like segregating the waste mm -hmm. as they are putting the waste in the right bins, mm -hmm. not littering around. Mm -hmm. Uh, those are very important and public participation so in how, how anything you, like this you, is very how important. How do you ensure this situation that public, uh, uh, how does, uh, how do you propagate it? Do you propagate it? Do you run some uh, special drive for this? It's from very early age, from the school uh, and so on, from a very early age mm. that is inculcated. Okay. So inculcated by the families, inculcated by the schools and uh, children grow up in that environment. Mm. 
so once uh, manual part is done how much of machines being used in london for keeping the city in order uh, of course uh, with the with the sort of there are uh, the the sweeping of the roads and so on so th this responsibility lies with the local authorities across yeah, yeah. and they do their job very well they use machines right. uh, they subcontract the work they do all sorts of things uh, but make sure that the london streets are clean so it is a combination of labor as well as machine yes. in keeping the city clean so once you have experienced such an exposure one of the biggest cities of the world the address one of the addresses of the world how will you tell about indian municipal authorities how to do it well i am in no position to actually uh, advise any municipal corporation uh, but like i said when i was in indore a mm. uh, couple of months ago mm. i was i was quite impressed mm. by the work that they have done uh, and with public participation mm. uh, you can make the city clean and uh, you know that indore was a great example of that so it means to say that uh, there must be certain level of awareness among the public to keep the city clean otherwise only the labor and the machine cannot do everything public participation is uh, important isn't it if uh, if you know machines and uh, uh, cleaners can do their job uh, but uh, it's important that uh, pub public is uh, uh, involved and public is also made aware of it that's really interesting that public should participate in this so again i will come to your career that after deputy mayor of london what is your next launch I don't know I love my job this is the greatest city in the world and I'm very fortunate that I'm in a position uh, where I'm able to give back to the city that gave me so much I came here with nothing I came here uh, not knowing anybody but here I am 16 years on not just a successful entrepreneur uh, but deputy mayor of this city uh, so I love this city and I enjoy my job so do you want to be a mayor mayor next time Well I think Sadiq Khan is the greatest mayor and I think even in 30 years from now ha. he might still be the mayor. Ha. Your origin of India and Pakistan doesn't come in the way of your interaction but it it if anything it helps we celebrate diversity okay. uh, not just tolerate diversity. So sometimes in even in gossiping do you talk about India Pak relationship how bad it is and how better it can be made. Well we talk about London and we talk about how we can improve london rather than uh, uh, the sort of international diplomacy best thing is to focus on the things where you can ch affect a change as opposed to things where you've got no impact mr sadiq khan was in india recently i think i remember he he was in india he came back so did he share any experience uh, his experience when he was in india oh he absolutely he was welcomed very well he absolutely loved the city lo lo love india love the cities that he visited that was not not the first time he visited india yeah i don't know um and he visited mumbai visited delhi visited amritsar absolutely fantastic he absolutely uh, loves uh, loves india but the relationship between london and india is a very old relationship okay and there are almost 600000 people of indian origin in london they are truly the living bridge between london and india and mr and khan appreciated when he was in india he appreciated he are well he is welcome and all absolutely uh -huh. uh, because he is not just uh, representing london but he is also representing the 600000 uh, people of indian origin who are all londoners uh, whilst he is visiting india oh so that is a uh, very interesting and on this note one can just say that uh, being from india as deputy mayor and mr sadiq khan being from pakistan as mayor doesn't make any problem in their relationship in running the city of london but what we have to learn is public participation in municipal work and an awareness and giving respect to all those who do the menial job in cleanliness and keeping the city better akhilesh suman for rajsabha television with camera person shiv kumar shivi sudarshan in london